Hi guys, today we are with Andrea Pongiluppi, our electronics manager. Andrea has more than 12 years of experience as a MotoGP electronics manager. Today, Andrea is going to explain us the traction control. I don't waste other time and I leave the word to Andrea. Thank you. Hi everyone, I quickly introduce myself. I'm Andrea Pongiluppi and I worked for more than 10 years for a big company in Italy as a MotoGP electronic manager. Today, I'm going to tell you what the traction control system is, what it is for, and how it works. So, we'll try to answer this and other curiosity. Let's start. The traction control system, or TCS, is a system mainly adopted for two functions, for safety and to get the most for vehicle's performance. As with other devices, it's derived from car world. The implementation on motorcycles, due to different complexity of the dynamics, require a more complex setup, which has been refined over the years with the use of increasingly sophisticated devices. The first series motorcycle equipped with TCS was the Honda ST1100 Pan European. The traction control system has significantly evolved thanks to better performing sensors and control units that have manually higher calculation power. Precise and accurate sensors that don't require particular filtering guarantee the use of the signal without negligible delays. The control units process data in ever shorter times and are able to intervene more quickly in the implementation of the adjustments. But in a nutshell, what does a traction control do? Traction control identifies the risk of the skidding of the rear wheel and intervenes in order to avoid it. But how? The first kind of adopted solution used the reduction of the supplied power. It cut the ignition when the difference in speed of the two wheels exceeded a predefined threshold. Therefore, an excessive request for acceleration corresponds to a skid phase of the rear wheel which make it to gain a higher speed than the front one. Beyond a certain difference in speed, the traction control intervenes, avoiding the striking of the spark, the engine loses the power and the rear wheel regain grip. Everything seems easy and simple if summed up. So yes, it's uh, simple to understand, but uh, a little bit less to achieve. Let's try to understand together why. How can you calculate the speed of the wheel? Generally, you need a whole sensor, usually two in competition, for redundancy of strategic signals. This kind of sensor sends step inputs to the SU. Each time it feels an alternation of the full empty of the flywheel or an alternation of the positive negative poles of the flywheels, it sends a step inputs signals to the SU. In practice, you have to mount a whole sensor and the flywheel on both wheels. The flywheel has a predefined number of poles, magnetic poles or teeth. By rotating, it causes the sensor to generate and send an input to the control unit for each passage of the tooth or the magnetic pole. The angular speed of the wheel, omega, can easily be calculated once you know the pulse frequency. You obtain it by dividing the number of the impulses by the number of the teeth of the wheel, then by the time. For example, you have a flywheel with 20 teeth and in 2 seconds the ECU receives 80 impulses, so the angular speed of your wheel is 2 rounds per second or 120 rpm. To calculate the linear speed of the wheel, you have to multiply the angular speed by the rolling radius. Perfect. So, can we say that we have calculated the final speed of the bike? No. For a car, the rolling radius is constant, but in a motorcycle it is not. Because while you are turning, the contact point between asphalt and tire changes and the rolling radius is reduced. So, the linear speed of the wheel depends on the roll angle of the motorbike. Concerning motorcycle racing, to further complicate the calculation, other non-negligible aspects must be taken in consideration. The type of tire, because dry and wet have different shape and dimensions. The deformation of the tire according to its centrifugal force, the faster you go and the greater the radius of the tire. And you have to consider also that 
the wet tire deforms more than the dry one. You can't neglect the consumption of the tire too that reduce the radius. For example, at the end of a race, the radius of a worn tire is reduced. Now that we have realized that uh, even the first uh, kind of traction control system was not uh, so easy, let's go back to analyze its strengths and uh, weaknesses. The cutting method of the ignition is the simplest one and does not allow a modulated intervention. It is abrupt since the, the loss of power in a single cylinder is uh, 0% or 100%. The effect of a lack of intervention progression is mitigating in multifractional engines, while it's evenly evident in single cylinder engines. The introduction of ride-by-wire allowed to intervene as a analog and not digital way, solving the problem of the not softness of the system intervention. A further big qualitative step was obtained by the use of the IMU, the inertial platform, thanks to which it was possible to create torque delivery maps according to the instantaneous dynamics of the bike. The signal of the IMU suitably processed allowed the control unit not only to understand the orientation of the bike, but also enables it to foresee the immediately expected behavior. Knowing the roll angle with a relatively small error also allow for a more precise calculation of the rolling radius and consequently of the speed of the wheels, which is, as we have already seen, the basis of the analysis to define the intervention of the traction control system. The predictive sensing and the modulated intervention of the butterflies make traction control extremely important to accomplish both the purpose listed above, safety and performance. In the racing field, the traction control has been refined to create strategies dedicated to particular situations. For example, launch control guarantees the best possible acceleration starting from a standstill. Anti-wheelie optimizes the power delivered with each acceleration to avoid excesses or continuous surges. And the slide control allows an expert driver a controller drift for the exit of a curve on an optimal trajectory. Well, we are at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this time. And if you want to satisfy your curiosity about this world, if you want to discover what makes a racing motorcycle so special, keep following us.